Yo everyone, what's up? We are here in the cold eastern front in the Moscow campaign and we are playing Soviets defending the monastery. Now here we are still in the objective. I'm a bit confused. Yeah, but now I found where I am. Now I like defending this objective by going right and building a very fast heavy machine gun nest. This is one of the coolest things you can do here. And yeah. It's extremely effective, extremely effective. You have to be very fast though. I lost a bunch of seconds and I got a bit late into the game. But yeah, <laughs> let's see if it works out. Okay, one. And yeah, this is the problem, I can't go too much left. This dude, yeah, he literally stuck up his head too high because I couldn't aim more down. <laughs> so yeah, if he had stayed closer to the house, he would have survived. All right, that's a nice start. Now either my teammate is going to use the heavy machine gun nest or, well, no matter what happens, the enemies are distracted by it now. So we have some time to build a rally point and start counterattacking. This sandbag here is a little bit risky because bots can get stuck in there. But since we are surrounded by enemies, I'd rather have it now quickly so they can't easily destroy the rally point. Okay. No enemies here. Oh, enemies on the right side. They are naturally spawning on the right side behind the river. So we, especially in the first moment, in the first three minutes in the, of the game, where the enemies don't have rally points set up usually, or not as many, you can expect them coming from there. Oh yeah, give me more of that headshot sound. Absolutely amazing, especially on long range when you hear it. <laughs> especially there. Oh yes. Oh. Oh yeah. That was two out of five or four. Okay. Yeah, that's a great start. We stopped them really nicely. We got 20 kills and... The enemies aren't really capping. This is the most important thing, to stop the first wave. Once the first wave is stopped, you have time to build stuff or think of a strategy or nerdle around with your vehicles. This is another place where they build rally points. Yeah, that actually was a rally point. This dude was extremely well hidden. I absolutely didn't uh, expect him here. Okay. Yeah, now let's give him some bullets. Yeah, he's very smart. He knows exactly the angle downhill where to hide. And where to place his body so his dark uniform doesn't get seen. That's a good one. Yeah, these dudes though, well, they're not that well placed. <laughs> okay, I threw away the TNT two minutes ago. That's a bit bad. <laughs> let's, let's capture this tank. Let's capture him. Now, to do this, you just build an anti-tank blocker behind him. Obviously not in front, so he... In the front, you will see. Sadly, I don't have a second. I don't have enough resources to to capture him from the front too, because then he can't escape. And this is like literally the most annoying thing for tank drivers ever. <laughs> but now everyone can just kill him. Yeah, everyone can. This our teammate could just flank him without uh, being afraid to do something. What you can also do is once a tank is is trapped like this, you can just throw a TNT in front of him, or to his front, and he's gonna try to drive backwards, but he won't understand what's going on, and just, yeah, <laughs> he won't be able to escape. Okay, now let's bomb them there. This dude killed the tank already, but, but, what the hell? Okay, yeah, this is a anti-air gun, and we don't like that around here. <laughs> Definitely we don't like that around here. Yeah, now, okay, this is the squad I'm leveling up currently, it's the Assault of 4 Feather of Squad. And I really like the PPSH, absolutely love the PPD and PPSH, super fun to play. I tried out the Feather of a couple of times and I have to say, at first I wasn't impressed, but then I started using it differently and now I notice it, damn, this is a super strong thing. <laughs> this is a ridiculously strong weapon. Yes, it's extremely good, extremely good. The damage is high, higher than assault rifles. It's basically like an FG-42. Oh, similar to an... If, if it had 30 rounds, it would be better than an FG-42 and the best weapon in the whole game. 
but even right now it is a close contender for the best weapon in the game, though overall it isn't. Yeah, so I'm leveling it up. Gonna take a long ass time because yeah, it's sort of four, so very many points to get. Now, after we stop them on the right side, I see they're trying to crawl out of the trenches on the left. Yeah, we already destroyed the ready point here, and now we just give them some grenades since we oh two two anti air guns and one tank. Yeah, now we know what killed us and where it killed us exactly. Okay. Yeah, we have to, to, to deal with these anti air guns because. Ah, I really wanted to blow them up. That's it. We have to deal with these anti air guns because. They. Well, I mean, <laughs> they're just annoying. And this tank is annoying too. So, yeah, let's take a tank ourselves. Oh. Well, my team doesn't build ready points, I see, which is bad. But the enemies. By the way, the enemies build ready, so I already blew up two or three enemy ready points. So let's, yeah, let's keep blowing up their ready points so their pressure doesn't get too high. What they need is basically just three or four ready points and they will automatically get every single objective. Because we only have one, the one that I built. And our defenders won't be there to fight whenever they get killed. So yeah, okay, let's get rid. Oh, beautiful one. That was a beautiful shot. <laughs> Not only the anti-air gun, but also all of the henchmen. Yeah, this is the tank that annoyed us. Yeah, get out of here, Panzer too. Okay. And there are three anti-air guns to have fun with. Yeah, we have to switch to anti-tank anti, uh, shells so we can actually pierce it. And the second one. Yeah, it's really satisfying blowing these things up. Also, you get a bunch of points, which is quite nice. Alright, but but what you actually get, like the biggest profit is you take away the time that the soldier... Because if you if they want to have new anti-air guns, they have to build them. They have to spawn a specific uh, engineer squad and just build all of the anti-air guns again. This will take a lot of their time. And also, trying to establish a position like that usually doesn't work instantly, it takes you a couple of runs, because you get killed and shot in the meantime. So, having destroyed that, throws them back a lot. Throws them back a lot. Also, it's nice to see that you just <laughs> completely devastated their plans. Okay, the left side is safe now, it's ours. Now we need to make sure they don't come from the right or from the center. This objective, if you're attacking for the first time, feels really hard to capture. But once you know how vast it is and how well you can flank, it actually becomes quite easy to capture. So, I know it myself, and I know what, how many strategies they have available. And we have to, to counteract them all. Yeah, like the best thing they can do is build two... Oh, that was a good one. Build two ready points on the left trenches. And build two rally points on the right somewhere and then just flank us. And we, we Defenders can't react to two attacks from different sides. That basically never happens. Also, whenever they see stuff like... Uh, oh, by the way, this is the heavy machine gun you see shooting. Whenever you see stuff like... Yeah, building assist must be my heavy machine gun, I guess, most likely. Whenever you see stuff like... Stuff like heavy machine gun fire on one side. Obviously, the enemies need to go to the other side, so... Or they just need to take a tank and shoot it. Heavy machine gun nests, especially built in buildings, are really nasty for the enemies, but they're also easily taken out. And usually also there are lots of normal soldiers around the heavy machine gun nest waiting. So whenever you just shoot a high explosive shell into the building through the window, you get like five kills and you destroy the heavy machine gun nest. So it's also quite easy to deal with. Yeah, this tank though is hard to deal with since he's hiding and running away. Oh, Panzer 3, they're getting better. Now we just need to see Panzer 4 and, everything, and we got all of the Axis Army arsenal. Yeah, my right, my right foot is damaged, so I can't really move that well here. Yeah, that's an uncomfortable position. <laughs> Very uncomfortable. We're holding them back. I have a feeling though, since we're not seeing any enemies, they are... Yeah, we only see one or two squads here. 
they must be planning an attack on the right side. Because... Because it's impossible to not see any enemies. It's impossible. Also, from the score sheet, I saw that they don't really have bots. They have lots of real players, possibly even only real players. So, I feel an attack is incoming soon. Alright. Yeah. Yeah, the snow is beautiful. Very, I absolutely love Moscow. It's for the, simply for the snow a lot. Alright. And we're getting surrounded by one... Yeah, I don't care one so If he had a TNT, he would have already thrown it. So I don't care about him. There's another dude crawling in the snow. There's a new tank. Yeah, we need to take care of this tank. Alright. Yeah, they're pushing me back. By the way, I really... I considered Grey Zone camping super boring. So I never do it. You saw I was literally... I drove my tank to the enemy Grey Zone. This is as, as far ahead as you can do it. So, Yeah, but... Now I return back to the objective, so they don't grenade me. Alright, next tank gone. I think it's even the same dude. It's the bar 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 barbarian dude with a Panzer II. Okay, oh damn it, the enemies are capping. I didn't notice. I literally didn't notice. I was constantly looking on these dudes around me and on the tank and they kept. Alright, let's punish them. Oh yes. That's how we punish them. <laughs> You're capping. Then you're dying. Very fair. Better don't cap. Well, if you cap, don't wait around like a bunch of monkeys waiting for some coconuts to fall down in this building. Like, once you capped, you instantly need to leave it. Because, of course, everyone's gonna start shelling it. Because very often, defenders who were too slow to defend, to come to the objective, they... They, well, they come a bit later, after you capped, and then they start shelling you with all of their nonsense. So... Yeah, it never wait in the objective. It's just super dangerous and they paid for it. Alright, we have a rally. Most likely our only one. So, <laughs> we better make it safe. Yeah. Yeah, these sandbags absolutely have to be because otherwise everyone can just shoot, s spam full auto fire or random grenades, grenade launchers and we lose it. Oh, oh, now the enemies have woken up. Perfect. They are pushing really fast and hard now. Oh, good artillery strike. Yeah, go to the strike. B, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna just quickly bop wire this so they can't rush us. Yeah, and this is unpleasant. This dude really was annoying. Yeah. Yeah, let's get. Oh, whole squad. By the way, I recently started learning all of the full auto weapons. Using a full auto, meaning FG42, so I constantly full auto now. And AVS is 2. And the Sniper FG42 that I recently unlocked and started playing. Also Normandy. To get better with them. Because it takes uh, actually a while to get used to the to the recoil and to the spray. So yeah. I'd rather have the... Also, it's but it's super fun. Once you can use them in full auto, it's amazingly fun. I can use them very, very well in semi-auto. Which I also recommend everyone. Because this is the more important shooting mode for these weapons, but, well, having an additional option is always better, of course. Oh, they're giving me my own <laughs> the medicine bag for model tofs. By the way, my Soviet army isn't really that well equipped. They don't have axes, ex except for very few soldiers. They don't really have mines, they don't really have lots of grenades and molotovs. So, yeah, it's, uh, most of the time they just have normal equipment without much stuff. But it's okay because, well, A, I guess it's historically accurate to not give them perfect equipment <laughs> and B it's uh, it's more representative of how games usually play out yeah this black mamba dude is giving us his rocket treatment all right get out of here dude there whenever you get destroyed it's because they're upstairs because this the b yeah okay yeah okay yeah this is, yeah, they did it well. We're gonna lose this, I'm very sure, because... Alright, mm, yeah, 90%, sure. Because once they're up, once they have the high ground there, you literally can't do anything, because they can shoot you in the head without you being able to see them. The only thing that can help you is a flamethrower. Uh, of course, once the door is open. Yeah, you don't need to see anything when you flamethrow, you just need to rush in and know how the architecture looks like. 
and just spray everything with fire. Yeah, yeah, this is the same as 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 the first objective. Once they once they cap it, I know since they're just standing around there doing nothing and waiting. <laughs> so of course I'm gonna flame them. And let's flame those dudes outside too. Oh yes, oh yeah. By the way, this is the most beautiful uniform, one of the coolest looking uniforms in the game, the Axis Sniper uniform. It is completely bad in terms of camouflage, because it's one of the easiest spottable uniforms, but it looks very cool, so yeah, I like it a lot. Okay. I, comp I constantly forgot, forget I have a spital, a spital knee on this soldier here in the squad. It's the one with 92 or 97 rounds. Basically a ridiculously overpowered, additionally overpowered PPD. Very fun to play. Yeah, we need rallies now because we're getting pushed back and the enemies have lots of lives. Also, if they get this objective, they usually get like two or three hundred lives. And if they get the, the second last objective, the Monastery Wall objective, which is the coolest to fight for, they get basically always 200, 240 lives. And in order to capture the last objective within the monastery, you don't need many lives. It's super easy to capture. It's very hard to defend. So, yeah, we need to really, really start giving high performance now. Otherwise, we're gonna get some big booty clapping from them. Yeah, more barbed wire, please, so they don't rush in. As long as there's barbed wire, they can't rush in and, and storm us and flame, uh, flame for us and so on. They can still cap outside of the building itself, but then we can just throw grenades because we know they're stuck there and just also flamethrowers become extremely effective when they're lined up there. Yeah, now we need to make sure they don't get in. This is the first line of defense. Yeah, I really would have loved to build this barbed wire there, but for some reason I couldn't. Yeah, building barbed wire through walls is really effective because it... Well, it has more reach. It, it can be also destroyed from outside, but you rather have the additional reach than the the like the, the price is definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. Okay, now, yeah, those bullets close to my head are not a good sign because I don't see where they're coming from, but they apparently see me. Ah, there you are. Okay. Yeah, this is the problem. The AVS. The full auto is good at short range, but not at mid long. Not even mid range. It's good because it's ridiculously bad in terms of spraying and precision. I'm just still gonna use it in order to learn it. <laughs> I don't really care. Yeah, as long as we stabilize here, everything looks good. So let's do it. Okay, let's give them. Let's give the axes their favorite weapon to go against the PPSH. I heard they absolutely love it, and they definitely don't get PTSD from it. Oh yeah. Oh, they're capping. Yeah, I also have a feeling these enemies are maybe playing in a 2, 3 or 4 stack because they are quite well organized. Whenever they start capping, it's it's not one squad, it's a bunch of squads. Yeah, we need to get Natalie Strike. Yeah. Especially, by the way, since we have the barbed wire and we can expect them to stay outside, the artillery strike will be very effective. Yeah, they're capping super fast. They started capping 15 seconds ago and they already capped 50%. There must be a breach through the barbed wire. Yes, here, yeah, exactly. Yes, alright, we stopped. Oh, one is upstairs. Easy, let's go. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are... <laughs> oh! Do you see this artillery strike? Oh yes, oh yeah, that came perfect. That artillery strike came really nicely. Just 12 attackers less to defend and we definitely couldn't have killed them. Yeah, they're overpowering us again. Oh, this dude wanted to get his headshot. <laughs> he literally jumped into the line of fire. I have to say that wasn't really smart because he saw us firing and he heard us firing, so why the hell does he jump into the fire line? And he all even knew it was a full auto, so even if, if he doesn't identify the weapon properly, he still mm, her, hears that it's a full auto spray, so you definitely don't want to jump into it. Another dude upstairs, we need to get him out, because depending on which weapon he has, he can just kill lots of us here, so yeah. Okay, yeah, this armor box that I built before is amazing, because... 
it literally just makes sure we can spray hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of bullets. Yeah, this is the best thing you wish for. A newly spawned squad jumping out of a building and you just spray into it. Okay. We have lots of smoke on the snow. Uh, but we don't have many enemies anymore. Yeah, we stopped their first big wave that, that was capping. Well, not the first, but the big wave that, was, that managed to cap 60%. And then the artillery strike that we called stopped the next push. And well, now they're, I guess, waiting a bit. Because, yeah, they're, they're collecting forces again. They're really well, they're really well organized. Like, they definitely play in a squad, in a, in a squad, uh, in a stack. Which is great, because if they didn't, they would have lost on the first objective. This way they have enough power and organization to, to push ahead and also to give us a fun, actually representative fight. Because in real life, you fight, war is organized. You don't, you don't just have a bunch of monkeys running around, not building rally points and then just rage quitting. No, <laughs> you, you plan, you create a plan, then you execute a plan, at least as good as you can. And then you get some cool organized fights. Okay. Alright, I started capping slowly, but but still. Yeah, this would. Ah, this I want to shoot in this window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This window was really, really problematic. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, by the way, this is a very low star feather off, since I can't update, upgrade them currently. And it's still really strong. Like the normal further off is even stronger because it has the additional damage. Uh, now they're capping quite fast. Yeah, they're capping normal. Sp yeah, they're capping. Yes. Okay. Now, I think they got 150 lives or 200. I forgot the number. Okay, <laughs> let's give them the traditional treatment. Flamethrower after capping. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna condition them to fear capping because first time they cap they got like a nine nine man kill high explosive shell, then they got a ten man kill flamethrower attack, and now they get another flamethrower attack. Exactly. Yeah, I see you in the bush, dude. It's not working. Yeah, I think this white uniform dude is one of us actually. All right, doesn't matter. So. <laughs> Happens, accidental, accidental friendly fire. You have to emphasize the accidental part. Alright, now comes the main event of the map, the Monastery Wall. These fights are really epic and really amazing and fun. And I'm gonna give you the best strategy for this objective. One of the, oh my god, they're capping again? If this, by the way, you have to win the game here. If you don't... You're in for the hardest possibly defense you can get in the whole game. Because, the, as I said, the last two possible objectives are ridiculously hard. So this second last objective, the walls, you absolutely need to hold. Yeah, first we get a rally since we already uh, noticed that we're the only rally point builder. And now comes the juicy part. Exactly, this heavy machine gun is here. <laughs> this heavy machine gun completely destroys enemies in the in the tunnel now to use it optimally you you preferably play with a with a stack so you can always tell so one player or the other players tell you give you information when when enemies are coming through the tunnel and then someone runs back and starts using the machine gun right i'm going to build a bunch of tank blockers so the main reason is there's they always use tanks as we saw in the game and if we have enter tank blockers, the high explosive shells will be blocked by these tank blockers. We absolutely need them. Also, we can hide behind them and, and survive and block the objective to hold the majority and fight. Yeah, like these enter tank blockers are very, very important. Also, they have to be on our closer to our side or to the center, because if they're close to the enemy side, then they use them as defense. But we want them to use as defense. Now, the... the secret source to defending this objective is always pushing forward 
and destroying their rallies. The rally point positions are on the very right in the wall and on the left in the wall. You can also build some down there, but the down rally points aren't really effective. The ones effective are only the ones on the very left and very right. And we, yeah, we need to search for them. Also, the, I saw two tanks. We need to blow them up because... Because these tanks, they have two tanks and they are shelling both sides. The, the right two tunnels and the left open breach in the wall. And... Yeah, no marks, sadly. <laughs> And yeah, we need to, yeah, it's, but, oh, anti-air gun again, mother hugger, all right, and, oh yes, that was a sexy one, the panzer dude is dead, and lots of his, his comrades too, yeah, that's how we like it, yeah, that's definitely how we like it, and the best thing is the anti-air gun didn't really do much. Well, I have to self-delete my soldier so he can spawn again, because A, we are under pressure, B, this one soldier wouldn't do anything. And C, we have infinite lives. Oh, we're, we're getting close to really nice numbers. <laughs> okay, now, the actual battle begins when the enemy start really pressuring you. Before, they didn't really pressure, but now it becomes hard. Yeah, I just got scared by it, I thought it was an enemy. Now, here's the, the others. By the way, there's lots of really important things to to keep in mind here because this objective is it, it offers many ways to attack and many ways to defend yeah this molotov was annoying i really really yeah i didn't want to wait longer <laughs> very simple okay you see ready point exactly we want to destroy blow up these ready points by the way if i had mines i would have dropped a bunch of mines on this bridge Anti-tank mines, of course, but I sadly don't have them because these They are really effective. Now. This is the other secret source Build some more tank blockers they because they also protect a little bit from from grenades and a little bit from from flamethrowers and so on and Once you have enough of them you can actually hide whole squads and build an armor box here and let all of your soldiers stay in this little room this room it's one of the main reasons why defenders can actually hold this objective. Because attackers literally can't g deal any damage to them. It's impossible, unless they come close to you. So they can't just camp on the other side, because you also can camp in this room with 10-20 people. So this room is extremely, really, one of the main ways to defend this. You absolutely have to use it. Very, very helpful. Now, what do we do with this tunnel? I'm gonna build tank blockers too, so they can't shell high explosives through this tunnel. Yeah, and a bunch of... A bunch of sand... Uh, a bunch of barbed wire. Also, more tank blockers, since one tank blocker obviously won't... He won't perfectly hit the one tank blocker I built, but if you build a, a bunch of them, obviously... Statistically, he's gonna hit any of them, and... We become immune against high explosives. Yeah. And we're getting those building assists. Easy. This is our safety room. And you see, with together with these sandbags, we're also immune against flames. And the best thing is, the tank blockers defend the sandbags from grenades. And the sandbags defend us from... Oh, second rally point. Beautiful. Yes, it is like the combo. You build tank blockers as the hard shell, very outside. And behind that, you build a bunch of sandbags. And then you have a perfect... Nice defense line. Yeah, we're grinding them down. Now, I haven't seen a big attack in a while, so I think there's going to be another strong wave coming soon. I sadly don't know what's happening on the left side, because I'm constantly on the right. So maybe they're fighting on the right already, I don't know. Alright, let's see. More ready points? Nope. Okay, r right looks say Ah, they have a bunch of campers. Downhill on the behind the river. Okay, let's let's snipe them. I think they're coming from the left. Yeah, it must be the left because I don't see anyone on the right, and we're constantly getting harassed, and they're capping. So yeah, let's get out of here. Yeah, yeah, I'm really. It's sad. I oh, what's that? Hello, misters. Nice. Yeah, I don't... This bot got himself up here. I don't know how, but... Yeah, we're gonna use this. High ground. For free. Free high ground. I take it always. Yeah. And Winchester alive. Yes. 
And she's got an anti air gun that can perfectly hit us here, which is a shame. <laughs> I really would like to Winchester more. For fun reasons alone. And, well, yeah. Mm. I wanted to hit, kill this dude in the anti air gun and then throw a. and then drop a TNT down where they're capping, but uh, yeah, didn't work. Okay, I don't really want to lose this point with 200 lives on the enemy side because it means they will have almost 400, almost 500 for the last objective, which is impossible to hold. So we need to we need to reduce them to to under 100, under 100 because we I know their team is stronger than mine, like their team is stronger than ours. So we can't even uh, just expect to out to overpower them. This won't work. Yeah, we need flamethrowers now because huge amounts of enemies in in tight spaces. Oh, we we over 100 engineer score. That's what we love. Require require flamethrowers. So, huge amounts of enemies. We absolutely want flamethrowers. Yeah, and since we know they're coming through this area, like the best thing they can do is just hide here and spam into our. Into our height, high, into our back position. So nope, not not anymore, not anymore. Yeah, like the the fewer spots they have to hide, the better for us, because then we can just shell them easily. By the way, this not only blocks them, it also gives us defense to hide behind. So yeah, perfect one-sided blade facing the enemy and giving us protection. And flame for our life. Let's go. Oh, you see, the barbed wire already had effect. They got. They, <laughs> they definitely didn't expect the barbed wire to be there now. Yeah, they, they, I think they pushed a couple of times through this tunnel, uh, through this little tunnel, and they already expected to be quick there, but nope. Yeah. Yeah. Usually they also hide here on the right side, or actually center. I really want to go left to, to blow up because they're, co they're constantly coming from the very left, so they must have ready points there. Oh, I didn't even notice we dropped them down to 80 lives. This is amazing. This is amazing. And this dude is smart, he's hiding. Yeah, there's someone be hiding behind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I really. I know I shouldn't, but I need to. I really want to. I shouldn't because it's. It's too hard to... Like, he sees me always first. <laughs> so, I'm just going... Yeah, I just avoid him and try to find rallies. Left side doesn't have rallies. They're still pushing, so the rallies must be on the... Uh, sorry. Right doesn't have rallies, so the rallies must be on the left. So, yeah, this way I need to attack now. And... Well, this is a strong push. We have, like, 10 defenders, and they're still almost at parity. So, there must be, like, 15 enemies there. Which is a lot. Yeah, this is, the, I think, the one mine that I have in my whole Soviet army. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you see, the barbed wire never disappoints. It never disappoints. Yeah. Oh, for some reason, we somehow managed to get rid of them. Okay. 20 lives. Easy. Now, this looks promising. Though they still have their rallies. I think they have, like, two rallies. One or two. I, I, I'd rather say two. Because they're they're overpowering our our one rally. Most likely they have two rallies on the left. Okay. Yeah, now I also can hide here. Nice. Yep, yep. Yeah here uh semi auto would have been better, possibly. Yeah, possibly. Alright. Eleven lives, let's go. And you see the pain, we only have one rally. We only have one damn rally. And it's painful as hell. <clears throat> Wait, are they... And they're capping. Oh! And you see they got 200 lives. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 200 lives. This is why you need rallies. If you had a second rally, rally would have won. Okay, now comes the, the big question. Is it the left or the right objective? It's the left objective in the wall. Which is... <sighs> it's very scary because if the enemies do a smart fast push, if they have one engineer running now towards the objective, building a rally, we instantly lose because it's impossible to hold. Because we have, when we die, like also like 30 seconds or more running. By the way, this is 
an annoying squad. <laughs> it's a whole squad pushing towards the objective. Yeah, like the best thing the enemies can do now is take an engineer squad and r quickly rush towards the new objective and establish a rally and then we instantly lose. Yeah, but as long as I'm here I'm gonna get rid of random soldiers here. Yeah, alright. Yeah, this dude must have been sitting within the barbed wire. I keep getting building assists. And, oh, by the way, I think they're also spawning in the right tunnel because this this torrent of, of building assist means they're spawning in the barbed wire that I built. Okay, you see, this is the problem. It's 100 meters, but it's also upstairs, so it's basically 150 meters away. Yes, this is a hell of a... And they're capping. Oh, damn. Oh my god, yeah, we need, we need a fast rally, obviously, I can't even afford rushing straight in, because if I die, no one's gonna spawn here and we lose, so yeah, and one sandbag so they can't just destroy it from a far away, yeah, let's go, let's go, this is the, the heart rate increasing part, <laughs> Yeah, I, I really would have preferred to hit someone because... Oh my god, yeah, lots of enemies already. Yeah, this is what we need. Yeah, PPSH. PPSH, spam. And grenades. Oh fuck, they, they're capping. They're capping. They're capping. Those mofos capping. Yeah, we need to... Oh yeah, oh yeah, we got parity. Beautiful. They, they're at damn 99. That. They're at motherfucking 99%. At least I'm not counted in the balance because I was downed. Only active soldiers count, so yeah. Alright, I see. I see. Oh, nice. Oh my god. <laughs> we stopped them at 99%. We stopped at 99%. And yeah. Let's whip out the best place we can come up with because we literally need them <laughs> anything else won't be enough all right enemies coming there get out of here okay nope no enemies now here's the thing this is a this is literally the most bottlenecky bottleneck ever so we just close the bottleneck good old tank blocker possibly the best tank blocker you can build in the whole game is in, in exactly in this spot and now yeah, it's definitely the most impactful because you literally can't capture unless you go through the tunnel, so yeah. Now, these bet um, uh huh. Yeah, now they can't really just rush in quickly and shell us and now barbed wire. Oh, damn it. Yeah, and my bots are stuck here, which also annoying as hell. All right. Ah, it, ah, they're stuck in the objective. Nice. I thought they're stuck in the in the graze in the spawn area. All right. Now let's attack. Well, they didn't let me build the barbed wire. This means I, I can finally actually push forward. Yeah, just building these tank blockers and then just pushing forward, keeping them as far away as possible. And if I had mines, I would drop a bunch of mines around the tank blockers. Because well, that <laughs> the tank blockers are going to slow them down, give us protection. And the mines will kill the ones who manage to go past the tank blockers. And anyone who stays in the tank blockers can just get a Molotov into his face. So, yeah. This is nice. Okay, one random grenade in terms... Yeah, in case they're too close already. Well, there is someone since we... Yep. And flamethrower time. Easy. Yes, beautiful. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They get, they get flashbacks from the second and third objective. Especially the second, so yeah. Yeah, you see, we already killed like 10 or 15 dudes with the last two attacks. Now we just make sure no one's coming upstairs. Yes, some fire down there. I didn't kill anyone. Oh, oh, they're timed out. All right. Yeah. I didn't really... Yeah, but this is now the big brain move. We have two soldiers defending. Once they manage to get another push in, these two soldiers will be instantly dead. So, <laughs> since we have time now, we can just delete our two soldiers and get a new whole squad on the objective. 
So we, so we have, yeah, like, this move is very important to do. If you don't do this, you can actually lose some painfully close games. You don't want, I lost a game literally where I needed to do this and I didn't do it. Because I became overconfident. No, no, I, 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 I underestimated the enemies. And, and we got destroyed literally in the last second. Literally in the last second. With zero lives and the timer on. And, oh my god. You see? They bring, brought a new squad and they, yeah, they brought a new squad and they actually managed to start, um, almost start capping. If I only had two soldiers, they would have started capping and instantly kept the, uh, kept the, uh, captured the last, the last percentage point. We, lit we literally could have lost this game on the last second, but we didn't. Alright, let's analyze the game. We have 200 kills, we have, we have, oh... Uh, Almost 200 engineer points. Well, I wanted to build some stuff in the last seconds, as you saw, to reach 200 kills and 200 engineer points. But this this dude didn't let me. <laughs> this dude didn't let me, and it was annoying as hell. Now let's analyze the teams. Well, my team sadly didn't build rallies. This is very bad and painful. <laughs> Literally didn't build rallies. <laughs> annoying as hell. But okay. And yeah, now the yeah, this is all we can say. <laughs> and. I see four people left the game. Guess when they left? Some of them maybe left earlier, but but a couple of them definitely left in the last. Definitely left once the enemies first pushed the last objective. They got butt hurt, and and since they're weak-minded, they they didn't want to keep on fighting and defending. But this is how what what wins you games. The best wins are the closest ones, and this is how you literally become better. By winning close games that other people are going would lose, and I definitely don't give up a game like this. I just I know, all right, I'm gonna win. Fuck it, I don't care what the enemies do. I'm gonna I'm gonna play better, no matter how. I'm gonna find a way, and the way was to well, just stay tight and focused. And the enemy team, well, enemy team had three rally point builders. I see, and yes, the three rally point bu builders. It looks like there are new players since it like the first, second, and fifth position could be a stack, because they're the only ones with rally points, and they they don't have name decorators, so there might be new players. Yeah, like this. Yeah, this makes sense. Yeah, they played really well. These three, yeah. Be, after me, these are the three best players in the whole match. The first, the second, and the fifth Soviet soldier. Because the others didn't do anything, literally. Like, the other players in the match didn't really do anything important. And they played really well. So, that was an amazing match. And the Soviet, uh, the enemy Axis team was extremely nice and good. I would like to play games like this. Every single time. So, if you have questions, let me know. If you want to say something cool, let us all know in here. And if you're new, subscribe and like, of course. And until next time, goodbye.